Hi, this is Crystal Alves Tusum from crystalnikiko.com. In this how-to video, I'm going to show you how to make pinwheel bows made out of ribbon that we are going to um, that you can use for anything really for headbands, for elastics, scrapbook layouts, cards. You can put them on anything, even clothes. So as you see here, we need eight strips of ribbon. Um, a lighter or a candle or, or a, a barbecue lighter as I have, an elastic and a pin, uh, sorry, a needle and thread with coordinating colored uh, thread to whatever ribbon that you've chosen. And I've cut out these uh, strips of ribbon, um, I think at two and a quarter each, and, but really you can cut them to whatever size you want. It all depends on how big you want your bow to be. I'm making these bows for my nieces, so I want them to be pretty small. So what I'm doing here, if you don't know how to make these um, pointy edges here uh, on the ribbon, which I'm sure most of you do, you fold it over like so. Then you cut from the folded um, side upwards to the open part of the fold. I don't know if I explained that properly, but um, I think the video shows you how to do it pretty um, easily anyway. Then I'm taking my lighter. I've already pre-done the other one, so we don't have to sit here in excruciating pain watching me do them all. I put it on a very low flame, so it's not too big, and I'm just singeing the edges of the ribbon just so they don't fray. So what it does is it basically just melts the ends together, and um, you want to be very, very careful when you're doing this, though, because it does change the shape of your ribbon. Sometimes it's a little bit harder to do this with... Uh, um, a flame and I know that they do have a liquid sealant called fray check at Michaels that is specifically designed um, to seal the edges of uh, ribbons to keep it from fraying. If you want to keep your edges pointier that's probably the best thing um, to go get. So here I'm putting the um, I'm facing the right side of the ribbon towards me and I'm folding it over in half and then I'm placing my needle underneath and right through the top so basically, as you see here, I'm going to do it again slower for you. I folded it in half. So now on the inside of the ribbon is the front side of the ribbon that we actually want to show. So the back side of the ribbon will end up on the outside of the fold. As you can see here, I stuck it right through the center of the ribbon, through the bottom, right through the top. And what I'm going to do here, as I'm showing it to you quite um, slowly right now, it, I normally don't do it this slow, but I'm trying to do it really slow so um, I can make sure that you can see exactly what I'm doing. I'm just crisscrossing them here. So as you can see, it makes um, an X like so. Then we're going to, we're starting with the, the first two ribbons that we started with is the ones that, um, that we have the four of. And of course you could do um, whichever um, order that you want to. This this is how I'm doing it right now. So again, I put my third one on and then I cross it the other way. So I just keep crisscrossing it in alternating directions as I um, fold the ribbon and place the needle through uh, the center of the ribbon. This is super, super easy to do. I'm, I'm doing it very slow. It looks like it takes um, <laughs> a while, but I'm just trying to do it slowly so you can see exactly um, everything that I'm doing just to make sure that uh, it's clear for you. I was thinking about speeding this up double time so that it wouldn't take so much time to watch the video, but um, I thought since the needle is so small, it's kind of hard to see that I would um, do this at regular speed for you. All right, perfect. It's also easier to do this on a, a longer needle as well, depending on how many layers of ribbon that you're doing. Um, but again, you can just use whatever you have if you don't have one. Then I'm just pulling the thread all the way through, and as you see there, it just pinched. You want to uh, pull it until it pinches, and then we're going to wrap the uh, thread around about <coughs> three to five times just to make sure it's nice and secure, and just keep playing around with your ribbon so it's, it's in the right place. Um, of how you want it to sit. If there's a, a piece of ribbon that's twisted, make sure you untwist it. So at the back here, as you see, I'm placing the needle through the back of the bow and up through the front of the bow. Then I'm placing it from the front of the bow um, 
through the back of the bow. So now our needle is going to be sticking out through the back of the bow here. And then I'm just going to tie one um, knot. So I place my needle through here and then I stick it through that little hole there and I pull it and we've got our knot. Then I'm grabbing my elastic. Then I'm placing my needle through the center of the hole there, as you see. Now I'm just twisting it here for you so you can have um, <clears throat> a little bit of a better look. So you can see what I'm doing here on the other side of the elastic. Of course, you can use whatever elastic um, that you wish. This is for a little girl, so I want to make sure that it was an ouch-free <laughs> elastic band. These are nice and fluffy and, and very easy to get in and out of um, kids' hair. Okay, so then on the right side, top side of the um, elastic, I'm just feeding it through the bow and pulling it tight. Then I'm placing the needle back through the center of the elastic and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Just do one stitch on this side. And then I'm going to keep doing that about four to six times just because I want to make sure that elastic is in there very, very um, securely. You want to make it very secure because, I mean, they will be pulling on it uh, or you will be pulling on it as they are um, putting it into their hair. So you want to make sure that it's in there nice and tight. And if you're not a sewer, you could, by all means, you could hot glue this onto your bow or use um, um, E6000, which is my favorite glue. Although uh, in this case, I do feel like um, stitching it with thread is a little bit more secure than um, using your hot glue gun. Now, of course, you can embellish this however you want. You can stick a little button there or a little jewel, whatever you want. Here, I'm just placing um, a ribbon into the center just with my hot glue gun. And then I'm just going to place um, one little rhinestone right into the center just to finish it off nicely. It doesn't need much glue, so be careful as to how much you squeeze that onto there. And that's it. you got a set of really, really cute uh, pinwheel bows. And I thought it was so cute that I had to make one for my little doggy. <laughs> so instead of using the, ba the uh, elastic I showed you on the left, I, I have these elastics that I got from the dollar store um, that work a little bit better than they're a little bit smaller. And they work, they stay in my uh, dog's hair a lot better. So, And here I put two elastics just in case she kind of scratches it too much that one breaks um, I, this way I know that the two are on there and there she is how cute is she it looks so cute on you on her it was her Easter um, bow and everybody loved it uh, so I'm just showing you here that I actually just sewed them to a headband as well and I gave these to uh, one of my nieces and I hope she likes it I haven't heard from her yet but I basically just sewed it on to the back here and if you're not a sewer of course you could just bring out your trusty glue gun and uh, glue it right onto the headband. And that's it. Got my headband from the dollar store and then you got your little um, elastic bow um, there. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see some more pictures and different um, colors that I did, please check me out on my blog. And don't forget to leave me a comment. I would love to hear from you. Okay, good night guys. Bye.